Boxing day does not mean only giving out this uh, gift. Correspondent on Boxing Day. Why is it called Boxing Day and the reason for its celebration? I've not experienced any queues at any filling station. The usual end of year queues at filling stations disappear as Nigerians command federal government. On special assignment, correspondent finds out the fate of convicted lawmakers in the eyes of the law. And the series begin, Nigeria's Sports in 2019. Hello, good evening and welcome to the NTN Network News. I am Joseph Johnson. Reading with me tonight, I have Michael Olale in Lagos, and Obehi Utobu Opresai is in Benin, and of course, Abdurrahman Usman Jibrila in Sokoto will also join us a little later. Thanks so much for joining us and compliments of the season. While Christmas is generally linked to the celebration of the birth of Jesus Christ, Boxing Day, however, seems to have diverse meanings and interpre interpretations across nations of the world. In this report, Olushe Adiagbo went on a fact-finding mission on what Boxing Day is all about, its religious perspectives and connotations. <laughs> well, I am um, boxing, you know, like this. Yes, it is Boxing Day, and Awuyele yes. Uluwashan is expecting to see the exchange of blows. From all indications, the boxing gloves is still hanged up somewhere far away from this location. Now, what does Boxing Day mean to the door of Emmanuel Okabi and Fivo oh, SE? Day. I don't know. <laughs> well, I do not know much about Boxing Day, but in all, I just came here today to have fun. Let's go back a bit to the history book. Every year, the 26th of December is observed the world over as the Boxing Day. Its origin is rooted in the British traditions and in Ireland, the day is called St. Stephen's Day. History also has it that in the British Commonwealth, the servants of the royal families had to work on Christmas Day and their services were usually rewarded with gift boxes that were only allowed to be opened the next day which was an off walk to spend time with their families. Here in Nigeria, the Boxing Day is usually a public holiday and many, irrespective of the background, take advantage of the day to spend time with their loved ones. The resident imam of Nasfat Central Mokhs Abuja, Ibrahim Akalambi, and chairman, Christian Association of Nigeria, North Central, Israel Akombi, who both gave the Islamic and Christian perspective to boxing, they said the lessons of the season is of goodwill, fairness to all, and sustaining brotherly love. Opening of gift itself is, uh, is a task. Now, the significance is just this God so loved the world and he gave, he gave his son. To us and we who have received this gift of God in his son Jesus Christ are supposed to love God and love our neighbors boxing day does not mean only giving out this uh, gift is telling us about the goodness to be kind to the people they also admonished the Nigerians to shun any act that can negate the peaceful coexistence while encouraging citizens to embrace the spirit of patriotism to achieve the growth and advancement they desire. In Abuja, Lucia Adiago, NT News. In the spirit of Christmas, the NTA Nugu Network Center has organized a party for children tagged NTA 2019 Christmas Fun Fair. The party drew children from different social and economic backgrounds who gathered at NTA premises to socialize and have fun with Santa Claus. Goodness Matsu reports that adults were also not left out in the event. This was sad Christmas fun fair was indeed fun filled. It attracted children within and outside Enugu. The event featured presentation by children, including talent hunt, drama, Lucky Deep. <laughs> The 
The Zonal Director NTA Enugu Network Center, Chief Benny Modi, on behalf of the management and staff, welcomed the children and their parents. She advised parents to dedicate more of their time for the proper upbringing of their children. I'm using this occasion to ask you to please spare some time for these children. When the parents, especially mothers, pay attention to these children at this age, the common saying is you catch them young. In this case, you teach them right. The high point of the event was the cutting of the Christmas cake by the children born in the month of December. In Enugu, Goodness Marcel continues. Meanwhile, personnel of the Nigerian Air Force have been commended for the significant progress made in 2019 in winning the war against terrorism. Chief of Air Staff Air Marshal Sadiq Baba Abubakar, represented by the Chief of Training and Operations, Nigerian Air Force Headquarters, via Air Vice Marshal Isiaka Oladayo Amao, gave the commendation at a luncheon organized for airmen and women to commemorate this year's Christmas celebration. Abubakar Mohamed Musa reports. The luncheon organized by the Chief of Air Staff, Air Marshal Sadiq Baba Abubakar, is basically to ensure that troops on the front line are not left out of the Christmas celebration towards boosting their morale in defeating the remnants of Boko Haram insurgents, delivering the Chief of Air Staff's message, Chief of Training and Operations, Nigerian Air Force Headquarters, Air Vice Marshal Isiaka Oladayo Amao highlighted a series of successes recorded by troops in the theater in the year under review and charged them to sustain aggressive operations for the restoration of complete normalcy to Borno and the Northeast region in general. For the operations we are uh, conducting now, we expect them to redouble their efforts so that we can bring this. Uh, Sorry about the sudden end to that report. Well, Christmas Day ended on a fatal note for a family of five when their vehicle crashed along Kubwa Guarimpa Expressway, burning all occupants to death. Kama Kama, who was at the scene of the accident, reports. Victims of the accident, which happened about 11 p.m. on Christmas Day, it was gathered that all burnt beyond recognition. Eyewitness account has it that the heel fitted SUV was on top speed before it skidded off track, somersaulted three times, ramming into a pillar on the flyover before the popular Charlie Boy pedestrian bridge along Kuba Expressway. The vehicle, as narrated, was engulfed by fire immediately. He just missed control from that red car position. So the car drawn him up to this pillar. So after he just passed the pillar, uh, the motor just turned. So after the engine goes, you just catch fire. Everybody burn inside. Yeah. It's five family, two yeah, small children, one the year. Onlookers around the scene, however, picked up the vehicle particulars, which indicated the vehicle's registration number as KUG 615TU. The number. Yeah, where is it? Where is it? Give me a bag. Police. Men of the Federal Safety Commission and kind-hearted individuals who rushed to the scene couldn't do much. When the incident happened, my attention was drawn to it and uh, I immediately called our rescue teams to, to go there. Road users are reminded that caution remains the watchword in the festive season. Kama Kama, NT News. Well, let's just talk about road safety because after a critical review of the first phase of the 2019 special end-of-year patrols, the core marshal of the Federal Road Safety Corps, Boboye Oyeyemi, calls on the motoring public to sustain their obedience to traffic rules and regulations as the second phase of the exercise commences in earnest. The core marshal also commends the corps across the country for demonstrating absolute commitment, professionalism and innovativeness in managing the massive traffic movement recorded before the Christmas celebration. According to him, the fact that traffic movements were orderly in most parts of the dreaded points across the Federation towards the festivities and no reported cases of commuters slipping on the road till the following day were reported is a positive development. Oyeyemi particularly urged those leading convoy vehicles to show greater restraint while passing through congested and built-up areas 
areas to avoid causing disorderliness that could result to traffic chaos and expresses gratitude to other security agencies for collaborating with the Corps in ensuring orderliness in challenging areas across the country. The availability of fuel during the festive period across the country has continued to generate positive reactions from Nigerians. Abu Bakr Usman Akwanga brings in reports from across the states. Eight long queues at fuel stations during Yuletide became part of life in Nigeria until the present administration tackled it head on. For about four consecutive years now, the season comes and goes without people spending nights on queue at fuel stations. Reports from across the country show that Nigerians are enthused about the development. From Calabar, Maureen Liu Ajon reports that major independent oil marketers dispense PMS at the approved pump price of 145 naira per litre, a situation that brought succor to many Nigerians during the period. We know that uh, we have an uh, action president in this country. 2016, we have issue of petroleum across the vast state. But in 2019, in December, he tried too much. This is the first time in Nigeria now, since uh, 1999, that we are having something like this. With the closure of the borders, it makes it difficult for them to, you know, need some of the fuels out, outside, you know, in the night. Bashir Ibrahim Nabada from Dusi reports that the usual perennial scarcity associated with the product during Yuletide disappeared as major fuel stations within and outside the state capital made adequate arrangements for the product. I, I can testify that there is change, most especially in this sector, because this is what I have seen uh, to be real. The story was the same in Port Accord as Ijoma Wiki reports that motorists experience free entry and exit from fuel stations across the state and express satisfaction with the development. Fuel supply is normal, everything is working well. No queue, no nothing. And no price hike, nothing, and the no, no scarcity of fuel. Chinas John reports from Abakaliki that stakeholders intervention on energy security and access of the product from major depot in the country brought about the MTQ experience during the festive period. The government has been able to manage uh, the flow of uh, fuel and the fuel distribution. We've not had any queues, I've not experienced any queues at any filling station. There's no increase in fuel price whatsoever. I bought yesterday, even this morning, I think I bought no increase at all. So I think we thank the government for that. We have increased our surveillance activities this period to ensure that the products are not hoarded or diverted. Nigerians appeal to federal government to sustain the regime of surplus beyond the Yuletide. Abu Bakr Usman Akwanga, NTA News. Now, it's four months since the federal government closed Nigeria's land borders to combat massive smuggling activities and other illegal transport activities undermining the economy and security of the country. How has the country fared since that decision? Well, Victor Azu evaluates the effects of the closure on the petroleum sector. Two separate arrests in May 2019. Officers and men of the Nigerian Navy saved Nigeria tens of millions of naira. The first arrest of five Nigerians and three Ghanaians was for allegedly attempting to smuggle 105 drums of PMS from Nigeria to Cameroon, while the other nabbed eight men trying to smuggle more than 200,000 liters of petroleum products valued at over 50 million naira out of Nigeria. The products were alleged to have been sourced from different parts of the oil-rich Niger Delta. Illegal refining sites were destroyed by the operation resulting in the arrest of 62 speedboats and 275 suspects for involvement in either crude oil theft or illegal bunkering. Arrests like these notwithstanding, smugglers have remained largely undeterred in the apparent lucrative trade of cross-border fuel smuggling owing to the obvious differential in petrol price between Nigeria and neighboring countries. After a series of unsuccessful engagements with officials of neighboring countries to check smuggling of petroleum products, the illegal activity persisted and even reached alarming dimensions. The number of uh, petrol stations that makes you wonder, too close to the borderline. Some of them, you see the discharge pump facing the other side. Doing what? 
Reports from the Petroleum Products Pricing Regulatory Agency reveals that Nigeria's fuel supply had dropped to an average of 48.54 million liters daily from 61 million liters before the closure of the borders. There has been a downward uh, trucking out of products from our depots. What we have seen uh, before the border closure on the 20th of August was a truck out of about 55 million liters a day. And now we are looking at about 51 million liters a day. However, with pressure mounting from neighboring countries for Nigeria to reconsider, how long more can the border closure be sustained? Yet, more importantly, how much more can the gains of the ongoing border closure be sustained? In Abuja, Victor Azul, NTA News. The military seems to be the most beneficiary of the Presidential Order 5, aimed at promoting indigenous technologies and local content. Defense correspondent Ismail Musa highlights some of the milestones so far recorded in this regard. Globally, militaries are partly rated based on their ability to develop or acquire their needed hardware to prosecute operations. In view of the nation's emerging security challenge, capital-intensive nature of the arsenal, and in line with federal government's local content policy, the Nigerian Army commenced massive research and development of needed hard and soft ways to cut down cartel fight. These locally produced mine-resistant ambush-protected MRAP vehicle, nicknamed Ezugu, is a product of collaboration between Defense Industry Corporation, DICON, and the Nigerian Army. The presidential directive was to evolve a professional, well-respected, highly motivated and people-centric Nigerian army that will have the requisite capability and capacity to respond adequately in a timely manner to solve the myriad of contemporary and future security threats. With customized reinforced suspension system, off-road capacity suitable for the northeast difficult terrain, the combat vehicle is produced from a high-grade ballistic material. The Ezugu MRAP is so cheap, equivalent of about 10 imported ones, and is very effective. Not only creating employment for the people, because I understand it's 100% locally manufactured. So that gives jobs to our youths, engineers, and the like. What necessitated Ezugu brand is the consummation of Kwa's intention to provide troops with protection against small arms and to also protect them against improvised explosive device which is a potent threat to the army and the or troops in the counter insurgency counter uh, terrorism operation in the north while in the engineering depth of Kaduna, I was opportune to meet an ongoing upgrade of a locally fabricated helicopter by the depot. So this helicopter was in Mongonu, but we have upgraded by improving on the capacity of the engine, and we have also been able to now purchase the swash plate, part of the pitch link, and the rotor, which we are now trying to install on the helicopter so as to further continue with our research and development of the helicopter. These developments are fast tracking ongoing internal security operations and the nation's military industrial complex. Ismail Musa, NTA News. President Muhammad Bari has assured the government and people of Burkina Faso who suffered a deadly terrorist attack that claimed, uh, which claimed 35 citizens uh, that Nigeria and the West African sub-region will not abandon them to their fate. Speaking on the attack carried out on Tuesday in Arbinda, northern part of the country. In a statement by the senior special assistant to the president on media and publicity, Garaba Shehu, the president said the slaying of 31 women among the innocent victims was cowardly and remains condemned by reasonable opinion all over the world. President Buhari also recalled his meetings, meeting last weekend with the country's president, Roach Mark Christian Cabore, on the sidelines of the ECOWAS meeting, on which both leaders agreed to hold a summit in the new year to discuss the issues of security and economy. 
if you've just joined us, this is the Network News on the NTA. We'll just take uh, some messages now. We have plenty more when we return. Stay with us. Council, management, and entire staff of the Industrial Training Fund, I wish to extend our profound appreciation to all stakeholders whose contributions, individually and collectively, ensured the landmark achievements were recorded as an organization in the outgoing year. Our special appreciation goes to the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria for putting in place policies that challenged us to unprecedented levels of performance. The National Assembly, the organized private sector, state governments, and other key stakeholders also played vital roles in ensuring that we delivered on our corporate targets, especially in the implementation of our technical skills acquisition programs that benefited over 450,000 Nigerians. In the coming year, we will redouble our efforts to preferring cutting-edge services to our esteemed stakeholders and develop programs nationwide to reduce unemployment and create wealth. I wish you a Merry Christmas and a prosperous New Year. Sir Joseph N. Ari, KSM, Director General, Chief Executive, Industrial Training Fund, announcer. Post football without banter. We love banter. All kinds of banter. Like the banter from a safe distance. We go beat in a later. <laughs> There's the this is still my house banter. Dad, Fudge isn't so bad. It's not as bad as zero, zero. <laughs> Get out of the world! Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> you're only calling to banter banter. It's just on one. Ah, uh, uh, bad belly banter. Your team can't even score an own goal. <sighs> Dry banter. I beg, take Joe. This is the only cup your team will be winning this season. Oh. <laughs> and then there's that. Better banter. Whatever the banter. Banter better with Coca Cola, the official soft drink partner of the English Premier League. Hooray! It's 10 years of quality leadership on the throne of his forefathers. All roads lead to Ibo Okyogon, your state. For the 10th coronation anniversary of Oba, Abdul Rashid Adito Yad Nikola Bujayola III, or no anybody of Ibo land. Come and be part of this milestone event on Saturday, 20 December 2019. Venue is Pella Square, Ojaba, Ibo. Special guest of honor is Excellency Engineer Shei Makinde, the Executive Governor of Oyo State, Royal Father of the Day, His Imperial Majesty Oba Lamide Olayo. Ola Deyemi the third, the Alafin of Oyo, Chief Host Engineer Abdurraouf Olanion, Deputy Governor of Oyo State, all sons and daughters of Igbo, it's time to celebrate our tradition, our heritage. Happy Coronation Anniversary. The Petroleum Tanker Drivers of New Peng, in collaboration with the Federal Road Safety Corps, happily felicitate with all Nigerians this Yaltide season with loved ones as you travel please do not overspeed, overtake or drive recklessly do not drink and drive don't use your mobile phones while driving obey all traffic rules use your seat belts at all times ensure your vehicle and tires are in good shape remember your life is precious to your loved ones and the nation we wish all Nigerians a Merry Christmas and a prosperous New Year. Otumba Salmon Akoni Oladiti, National Chairman, Nupeng PTD, announcer. What we are really cultivating here is a better future for all Nigerian women. All and it's not always easy. Panadol Extra relieves headache, backache, joint pain, toothache, and menstrual pain. The pain is worth it.
You're still watching NTN Network News. Let's turn our attention now to the judiciary where the Federal High Court sitting in Lagos recently convicted the former governor of Abia State and chief whip of the Senate, Oji Uzo Kalu. He is currently serving 12 years prison term as handed down by the court at the Krikri Correctional Facility in Lagos. What is the position of the law on a member of the Senate, now an ex-convict? Delia Tumbi of our judiciary desk provides answers to that question. Tonight, Constitution under Section 308 grants immunity to the President, Vice President, Governors and their deputies from criminal prosecution. However, members of the National Assembly are not exempted from criminal prosecution while in office. One of the prerequisites for eligibility for aspiring for the position of office in the National Assembly is that one must not have been an ex-convict. However, if the aspirant to the office is standing trial for an offence bordering on fraud and dishonesty and has been convicted as long as he has exercised his right of appeal by challenging his conviction at the Court of Appeal, his eligibility to stand for election is, however, not vitiated. The Constitution has provided under Section 66 that um, if somebody has been convicted, for financial misconduct, he is not qualified. However, if he has an appeal pending, there will be no disqualification. But now, he is still a member until the period within which he should appeal to the court of appeal would have lapsed or the appeal would have been determined. The 1999 Constitution has amended further envisages that an elected officer is subject to the rule of law. This was provided for under Section 68, Subsection 1B of the Constitution. Flowing from the Constitution, what happens to the seat of a parliamentarian that is convicted as in the case of Joshua Darie, a member of the 8th Senate, and recently the former governor of Abia State, Oji Uzo Kalu, who is the chief whip of the 9th Senate. So once he files an appeal, he will remain a member of the National Assembly until the appeal is determined. If you are in the parliament and you are convicted and you are on appeal, it does mean that uh, Section 68B or thereabout will not be applicable. The lacuna created by the absence of a parliamentarian voted by his people to represent the interests and expected to meet the mandatory one-third sitting obligation needs to be attended to. Therefore, can a convicted parliamentarian still discharge these constitutional duties while serving a prison term in a correctional service facility? When a senator is convicted and sent to prison, and the, the amount of time he'll be spending in prison is such that will affect that his tenure, either uh, in largely in saying this is going to come for like two, three years, or maybe even half of those people. I mean, people deserve effective representation. For me, at that point, if the sentence and the jail term is long enough to emasculate effective representation, which is the intent of being a senator, then that senator should automatically lose his seat. This is the final arbiter on this matter. If this court upholds the decision of the trial court after its appeal at the appellate court, in line with Section 68B of the 1999 Constitution as amended, Oji Uzo Kalu automatically loses his seat as a senator. However, if the apex court pronounces otherwise, he maintains his seat. In Abuja, Dele Atumbi, NTA News. Dele, thank you for enlightening us on that matter. Meanwhile, the world today is driven by technology. Unfortunately, accessibility to ICT facilities and the applications by students in the rural communities have remained a challenge for the future development of the region. To address this challenge, though, the Nigerian Content Development and Monitoring Board, as part of its commitment towards improving the situation, has donated a modular science laboratory and an ICT centre to secondary schools in Brass local government area of Bielsa State. Fred Oifia tells us more. Quit or unavailability of ICT facility and laboratory equipment is identified to be largely responsible for poor performance in certain subjects among students in rural schools. 
With the donation and commissioning of a modular science laboratory at Government Model Secondary School, Tuon Brass, and an ICT center at Government Secondary School, Okwama, by the Nigerian Content Development and Monitoring Board, these students can now get set to compete with counterparts in the best schools. This is the first time we are having a well-furnished lab, and we are very happy about it. And we also want to thank NCDMD for the infrastructure. The equipment of this issue will actually add to the education of the students. Executive Secretary NCDMB Simbi Wabuta says the board is committed to supporting the educational aspiration of secondary school students at the grassroots. In our strategy uh, going forward is to encourage STEM education as well as ICT in secondary schools across the country. Nigeria Content Development and Monitoring Board has been commended for investing on the future of students as the school authority was hushed to make judicious use of the facilities. I want to say thank you to him for going beyond his command. Fred Owefie, NTA News. President Mohamed Buhari joins the media, particularly the advertising industry, friends, family members and professional associates to, in celebrating foremost advertising practitioner and chairman of the Troy Car Holdings, Biodun Shobanjo, on his 75th birthday. The president congratulates the marketing communications consultant for years of lofty achievements following his investments in an integral part of the economy that has created jobs, equipped many with skills for startups and attracted the global spotlight. President Wari congratulates uh, Sobanjo, whose wealth of experience and knowledge he believes will continue to inspire entrepreneurship in more people and prays that the Almighty God will grant the advertising experts longer life, good health and more wisdom to keep investing in the country and hurt its citizens. And President Mohamed Bari congratulates Nasarawa State Governor Abdullahi Suli on his 60th birthday, urging him to make good governance his priority in order to leave a lasting and favorable legacy. The President, who wishes the Governor many more years in good health and prosperity, advises him not to rest on his oars, as he, the task of fulfilling campaign promises is even greater than the campaign efforts. More internally displaced persons of Bakasi origin in Cross River State have been empowered with skills aimed at improving their livelihood and making themselves reliant. The skill acquisition program put together by the National Commission for Refugees, Migrants and Internally Displaced Persons also equipped beneficiaries with start starter parks on soap making. program came with a lot of hope and succor for the returnees in Akwai Koreyoidem and that of Ikorefi Mubutong. The package which coincides with the yellow tide would not only boost their income but will also ameliorate their sufferings. We so much appreciate National Commission for Refugee and Migrants. This training has helped us a lot because we will be able to use our hands to produce things. Partners still need to help us so that we may climb a good ladder. We can carry out a series of trainings for them to ensure that they have a means of livelihood. Some of the items presented to the returnees include measurement skills, soap mixer, safety kits, chemicals, as well as 7,600 KVA generators. In Calabar, Erika Evi, NTA News. You're watching the Network News on the NTA. Let's take a breather here as we join Michael in Lagos for stories from that axis. Compliments of the season, Michael. Hope you didn't go about uh, boxing no one in the office today. <laughs> one in the office today. Of the season, Joseph, and welcome to Lagos. The stars shone brightly in form of 10 million lights across the vicinity of the household of God Church or Regun Lagos on Christmas Day. Imole Ayotekede reports that the sparkle was a befitting ambience for the ministry's annual Hallelujah Night, which had members projecting their favorite Bible characters. These bright lights that run through the roots leading to the church premises and everywhere around the imposing worship structure, as well as car parks, is why it is called the Night of 10 Million Lights. <laughs> A 
are naturally drawn to light. And so, the worshippers who were in awe captured the moment. Founder, Household of God Church, the initiator of the concept, gave us a guided tour of the majestic arrangement. This is a night of 10 million lights, reminiscent of the heavens. The one who created and established the Federation of Luminaries and marshaled them in their starry circuits and echelons to declare the glory of God and show forth his handiwork. That's what we are doing. That's what we are emulating. This is a microcosm of the heavens. So at Christmas, we know that the posture is to look heavenward. And that's why we have brought all these lights. I'm sure you're fascinated by the royal presentation of Pastor Chris Okoti. Well, he is assembled in the likeness of the biblical Joseph from the book of Genesis. Just like their spiritual leader, worshippers showed up in Bible characters, which is the dress code for the Hallelujah Party. From the temple guards to King David, pregnant Elizabeth, Ruth, Eve, and many more. Members of the congregation were divided into 12 groups, which represents the months of the calendar. In Lagos, Imole Ayotukide, NTA News. Impersonation is a growing trend among criminally minded individuals and has spread their drug nets to many sectors, including the military. Lynn Neneke reports on three suspected imposters who were nabbed by the Nigerian Air Force in Lagos. The three suspects were paraded at the Nigerian Air Force Base, Ikeja. They were arrested for allegedly forging fake identity card of the Nigerian Air Force, which they used in defrauding some victims of their valuables in the Ajao Estate area of Lagos State. The suspects had in their possession computers and other equipment for producing various military and paramilitary identity cards, as well as other gadgets allegedly used in committing other crimes. On Saturday, this is uh, uh, my gentleman just come and meet me that they were looking for coin day and they told me that he snapped in the Oga picture. So I said, okay, no I'll not go. Wait to come teach, train for my place with that. He said I should assist him. So that he'll be able to collect his money. So I not, and I say, Oga, if I assist you, I know what things that will put me in trouble. And I said nothing will put me in trouble. I did it for him. For the past two years I've never set my eyes on him again. The service will not condone any acts capable of negating its core values or to tarnish its image, either by its personnel or any other individual. The Air Force implored the public to immediately report any such suspected imposters to the nearest police station. In Lagos, Lynn Lenake, NTA News. This is NTA Network News. More reports after this commercial break. Please stay tuned. Cultivating here is a better future for all Nigerian women, oh and it's not always easy. Panadol Extra relieves headache, backache, joint pain, toothache, and menstrual pain. The pain is worth it. <laughs> uh, that channel where you watch just now don't work out. Huh? No panic. Can you make no panic? You go do it by yourself like ABC. Oh yeah. Press the menu button on top of your remote. Scroll up and down till you see information central. Then press OK. Mm, press OK. Check the signal strength and quality. If the signal strength and quality pass 70, make you press the exit button. Go back. Go advanced options. Then choose installation. Then go to reset and press OK. Yeah, press OK. Wow. Wow, now you say fit catch all those channels will be one miss road by yourself. <laughs> yes, make your groove for no loss. You see, as I do, I'm a bit. Huh? And I see, as I do, I'm go TV, live it, love it. <laughs> and I see, as we do, I'm. What we are really cultivating here is a better future for all Nigerian women, oh and it's not always easy. Panadol Extra relieves headache, backache, joint pain, toothache, and menstrual pain. The pain is worth it. We have come to the end of another successful year, and we wish to appreciate all those that mean so much to us. Our sponsors, our clients, government at 
all levels, corporate bodies, advertisers, religious bodies, civil society groups, political parties, and above all, you, our esteemed viewer. Together, we made 2019 great. Together, we shall make 2020 even greater. That is why we say thank you. This is wishing you a Merry Christmas and a prosperous New Year. Thanks for staying with the NTA. We are now back in Abuja. The Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation (NNPC) and the Chevron Nigeria Limited have executed agreements over the multi-billion dollars escrowed gas to liquid project. Group managing director of NNPC Melekiari says Chevron Nigeria Limited would boost the domestic gas market. He acknowledged the roles played by President Muhammad Buhari and the Chairman Senate Committee on Gas, Senator Basi Akban, which he noted culminated into the execution of the agreement. Uh, it will work for all of us, it will add value to our country and, and ultimately uh, the work, the jobs that it will create, you know, for the, for the jobs that it can create and also the opportunities that it will unlock. Gone are the days when the gas was fled in the field and all the efforts are in gear to monetize that gas and EGTL, what it helps to do is to enable that commercialization, monetization of our gas resources. Well, let's take you to uh, Sokoto Network Center now where uh, Abdurrahman Usman Jabila is standing by with more reports. Good evening. Christmas activities have continued in Sokoto with Christians spreading message of love and peace. Muhammad Nasir went around the metropolis and has this report. Boxing Day is the day after Xmas, though there were no activities at many churches. The God's own ministry held a morning service. Away from church service, clergymen under the auspices of Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria gathered to celebrate the season after a year round of religious activities. Pastors and their loved ones eat, drink, and share joy to fellow Christians. Today we refer to it as uh, Boxing Day. Uh, what that really means is that today is a day when you are supposed to unveil the box. Yes, Christmas is all about celebration. It's all about love for one another. Set out today after Christmas to share love. Uh, love is so powerful because it cuts across different barriers. The NTS Sakuta Network Center was not left behind in the festivities as Children Xmas Party was organized where children and their parents had fun. As Boxing Day entails spreading love among people, Christian Corpus Fellowship of Nigeria spent the day at the Sokoto Open Edge. We just proceeded from the prison to this place. So it's a season of love, the season where Jesus Christ was born. So we just came because he, he asked us to extend the love to everybody in the society. Gifts were presented to orphans to make them part of the celebration. In Sokoto, Muhammad Nasser, NTA News. The wife of Zamfara State Governor Haji Ishabello Mohammed has presented 500 Ankara fabrics to the state branch of the Christian Association of Nigeria, Women Wing, in the spirit of Christmas celebration. This is aimed at supporting beneficiaries to celebrate the festivities with ease. Sadia Awakar has a report. Miss, which is an annual Christian festival celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ is observed on 25th of December. Christmas in Nigeria is a time of great joy when families get together to celebrate. It is with this view that the First Lady of Zamfara State, Haji Aisha Bello, presented Christian women in the state with 500 Ankara fabric to make their celebration more joyful. Presenting the gifts on behalf of the First Lady, State PDP Women Leader, Aisha Waziri said the gesture is aimed at promoting unity and harmony between the religious groups in the state. Some of the women who expressed pleasure over the gesture prayed for the Sussex of Governor Bello's administration. You bring many good things in this Afara, which we cannot be able to table, but you give thanks to everything because it is only God that lets him and not man. Number one, he brings peace in this Afara. And they bring unity. This is the first time 
that they follow us to church with wrappers that I can give to women, women in the state. His Excellency gave us rice, gave us cow, in order to see that we did the Christmas successfully. Sadia Abubakar, NTA News. That's our contribution from Sokoto back to Joseph in Abuja for more on network news. Thank you, Abdurrahman. As part of its social corporate responsibilities, the Nigerian Television Authority, in collaboration with other media organizations, is leading the campaign for the welfare and security of people living with albinism. Abu Bakr Usman Akwanga reports that the effort is in line with the 2020 Ivory Aid Ball and Fundraising Committee for Albino Patients. Studies show that people living with albinism are exposed to various degree of health challenge with cancer of the skin and eye on the front burner. This development has been engaging stakeholders across different fields of life to design frameworks of mitigating the problem. The latest initiative is driven by the 2020 Ivory Aid Ball, aimed at raising funds to address common health challenge with the media as critical stakeholders. We, in the NTA and the FRCN, see this project as part of our uh, social corporate responsibility and we are also hoping that well-meaning organizations and individuals out there will key into this partnership to ensure that we give our brothers and sisters who need this assistance particularly especially those of them who are very vulnerable it is so timely because as we speak um, the, we, we're having challenges uh, pay, meeting the bills of, of the National Hospital. And so uh, this is a welcome development. As a demonstration of commitment to the actualization of the program, a 42-member committee was inaugurated to accomplish the tax ahead. Managing Director of NTA Enterprises, who represented Director General of NTA, Mr. Maxwell Loco, charged them to remain steadfast in pulling resources in meeting the health and social problems of people living with albinism in Abuja. Abubakar Usman Okwanga, NTA News. Time now to join Obei in our Benin Network Center for more stories. Benin. All right, Obei, season's greetings to you. Greetings to you too, Joseph, and thank you very much for joining us in Benin. All operating four stations in the Benin metropolis are open and functional as residents make the best of the yuletide. This is an indication that the state is enjoying petroleum product efficiency. The report. A few years ago, the situation might have been more of a yuletide undermined by petroleum product scarcity chaotic crowd in four stations, and a booming black market. Not so in the current experience. The availability is purely for the government that does it. They don't stand by any marketer to divide. And that is why there are people on ground monitoring what is going on. The filling stations are patronized only by normal traffic, and there is petroleum product sufficiency. At this point uh, of the Xmas season, most times we don't see petrol goods, we don't see the products. But, but for us to see it right now, it's really commendable. Unlike every other year, when it's your tie season like this, scarcity everywhere. But right now, it's very easy and uh, I think it's a good one that Nigerians should, uh, should maintain. The federal government, through the Group Managing Director, NMPC, has assured Nigerians that petroleum products will be available all through the Yuletide and beyond, with hitherto shortages non-existent. Inmates of the Nigerian Correctional Service Medium Security Custodian Center, OKO, have had the opportunity to also celebrate and share in the joys of Christmas. As Bishop of the Benin Metropolitan Sea and President Nigerian Bishops Catholic Conference celebrates the Mass, giving the inmates an opportunity to receive the sacred sacrament. Agatha Iguariujo reports. Archbishop Akubeze reminded the inmates that God is always with them despite the circumstances that brought them to the center. All that matters clearly, clearly belongs in Christ, is that our Lord has come 
to redeem you. He has come to set him free spiritually. The deputy controller commended the archbishop and the diocese for their contributions to make life easy for the inmates. Others described the annual event as beneficial. The inmates here should go back and think of what where they are and try to uh, go away from that mistake. We've been able to organize ourselves as an organization, putting up a crack team of lawyers who will be at the defense for those who are waiting trials. Different societies in the diocese presented the center, food items and toiletries. In Benin, Agatha Egwaruju, NT News. And that's our contribution from Benin Joseph. It's over, over to you now for the continuation of the news. The, from our Benin Network Center there. The performance mandate of the ministers is to ensure the delivery of public service to the people and make governance more open and enhance credibility of governance. These views were expressed on NTS Current Affairs.